In today's video, I am going to be sharing with you the cost of living here in Albania. If you're coming to work here as a remote worker, you're going to be spending a month or two or three months here. This is the video that you need to watch. How expensive is Albania? We will find out today. What I'm going to do is announce all of the prices in the local currency, which is the Albanian Lek. I'm going to convert those prices into pounds, dollars and euros down in the description. So go and look in the description for the local prices in your currency. It is currently quarter past seven in the morning. Yes, I am an early riser. I like to get out when it's a little bit cooler in the morning. And the first part of call is obviously breakfast. I need a coffee. I need something to eat to give me that energy to start the day of exploring and sharing with you the cost of living here in Albania. And as you can see, it is an absolutely stunning day here in Tirana. Beautiful blue skies and sunshine. Like I say, early morning is the best time to explore this city. It's much quieter. As you can see, mainly it's locals heading to work and I'm heading to the coffee shop. So all of this cost me 440 left. That is 150 for the baguette, 210 for the coffee, large coffee, and 80 for the water. So an hour and a half later, I've done some work on my website. And I'm now back out sharing the cost of living here in Albania. Right, so I don't know if you can see the prices here, but we've got uh, coffee and brioche, 130 lek. We've got a croissant, an orange drink, and a coffee, 300 lek. So I do have this little rule when I travel, and that is if it doesn't have a price on it, I don't buy it. So we're now back in the market area. I was here in one of my previous videos. I thought I would go around and share some of the prices. So I just purchased some olives and they cost 150 lek for half a kilogram. So this is what half a kilogram looks like. Big, big bag of olives. Yup. So I did notice that a lot of the fruit and vegetables don't have any prices, I guess. It depends on the price, depending on the weight. Just seeing these Credins Bank signs and it just reminded me something that's really important to talk about. From all of the research that I've done and my own experiences, most of the banks here in Albania charge as much as 500 lek to take out any money using a foreign bank card. Now, there's one bank, Credlin, which I just mentioned. I'll leave a link to their website down in the description. Sorry, noise in the background. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description uh, to check them out to see with the locations of their ATMs. But for my own research, they don't charge any fees when you withdraw money using a foreign bank card. And you will save a little bit of money knowing that little bit of information. And I love Tirana and all of these little shaded spots where I can sit down and relax. But I think I'm going to go for a coffee. So this orange juice cost me 250 lek. And it's in a bit of a touristy area in the shade. As you can see, pretty chilled area. Also I have free Wi-Fi as well. I must have said in all of my videos just how chilled this city is and the last 25 minutes I've been sat there people watching and one of the things about Tirana is just the amount of open spaces and parks where you can relax and this doesn't cost you a penny or should I say it doesn't cost you a lek with regard to the internet when you arrive in the airport the main international airport you can go to a Vodafone kiosk and it costs you 1,500 lek, which is for 15 gigabytes of internet and five gigabytes of video, plus some call allowance as well. But what you will also find all throughout the city in the parks is free Wi-Fi, which is hosted by the local council. And I found that to be very fast, to be honest. Also in lots of coffee houses, cafes, you will find free Wi-Fi as well. You will be connected very easily in this city. By the way, please keep watching the video to the end 
because I'm going to be going to the supermarket and taking what I buy back to my apartment and then going through how much everything costs. Before I forget, actually related to the internet, the pass, the tourist pass, only lasts for 21 days. If you are wanting a SIM card to last you for 30 days, then you can go to a local Vodafone shop and ask them. Most of them speak really good English from my experience anyway. And yes, you can get a 30 day SIM. It's slightly cheaper, but you don't get enough data. But if you download the Vodafone app, the Albanian app, you actually get 10 gigabytes free. So that's worth bearing in mind as well. And also regarding cost of accommodation, I'm gonna be including that in my apartment tour video to show you what you get for your money. Now I've not done a great deal of tourist attractions if I'm being completely honest. I've been spending quite a lot of time just chilling out in parks, having coffees in little cafes, working in coffee shops and relaxing. I've not done what you would class as a kind of a touristy thing. I do prefer slow travel and I tend to leave all the touristy things until my final week in the city that I'm in. So next week I'm going to be doing all of that touristy stuff. Yes, I'm going to be leaving Tirana and I'm heading to the coast. So yeah, looking forward to that, spending all of August on the coast. Always keep hydrated, this cost me 60 lek. Need a drink, I'm thirsty. Right, it has just gone at 11 o'clock. I'm going to go and get my lunch. I like to eat a little bit early to avoid the crowds. I don't know if you can see it over the road there, but that's called a pyramid, and it's been redeveloped at the moment. So right now, I'm in a shaded little spot as I've tried to be all day today as I've been talking to you on camera. It's just nicer to be in the shade. Much cooler, especially as we approach lunchtime. So yes, I'm going to go out for some lunch today. It's rare that I do go out and eat, to be completely honest. I probably do it about twice a week, once or twice a week. The rest of the time I will go to the supermarket and buy my food from there and take it back to my apartment and chill out in the air conditioning and relax before I start my work later on in the afternoon and into the early evening. The tricky bit is figuring out where you want to eat because there's so many places to eat in this city and not everywhere they'll start serving food at 11 o'clock. So yeah, I'm not sure where to go for lunch. Okay, fast forward about three days. <laughs> I'm back continuing on filming this video. And it is very hot again. Low in the weather here. So I went to one or two restaurants and they weren't serving food at 11 o'clock. It was just coffee and drinks. So I decided to go back to my apartment and chill out and come back out. Today is Sunday, much quieter in the city as you'll see from the footage. And I've just picked up a barek, which is like the local snack here. This is filled with cheese, but you can get it filled with all sorts of things like spinach and onions. And they are delicious, not particularly healthy, but they are delicious. And this one, I'm not too sure how much it costs, but I will let you know down in the description where all the prices are from this video. Let's talk about the public transport for a second. There are buses, as you can see, and they cost 40 lek, and that's anywhere in the city. There's no train network though. It is worth bearing in mind that there is a website. I'll leave a link in the description to it. But yeah, there's nothing on Google Maps or anything like that. So there's no apps to plan public transport, at least, uh, you know, what I'm aware of. So I'm sat in the shade and I've got myself an iced coffee. Now, I'm not sure if this is the right price or if I've just been ripped off. Tell me in the comments, but this was 150 lek, which isn't much money. But normally drinks, uh, 80 to 100 lek. So this does seem to be a little bit more expensive but it's a nice coffee a macchiato don't know if you pronounce it like that and i need this coffee and coolness it was worth the 150 lakh 
Right, let's head to a tourist attraction which is very popular here in the city centre. So down here is Bunk Art 2. It's the smallest of the two bunk arts. We're going to be going to the largest one next week. And here is a bit of a close-up. Not sure how busy it's going to be today. It's Sunday, so everybody's off work. We'll see. So we're inside the bunker. It costs 500 left. It might sound a little bit muffled because I've got my mask on. We are in very confined space. And this is a room of all of the people that were executed due to their political status. Very sombre. So, any foreigners staying in hotels, these are all the keys for the entrances so they can come and go and intercept any foreigners. Before I went into Bunkart 1, I bumped into a wonderful German couple who watched my videos in Albania. So, thank you for the compliments on my videos, I really appreciate it. And it's great to meet people. I've met a few Albanians, I've met a few tourists as I've been walking around the city. And to me, that's just really surreal when that happens. So, yeah, thank you for approaching me and striking up a conversation. It's, uh, it's just great to meet people. So, inside the museum, it was a little bit busy. It was hard to get much footage. I highly recommend that you go, though. It's an educational, a surreal, a sombre experience and I recommend you go during the week maybe early in the morning to avoid the rush at the weekend there was lots of people in there I wore my mask because there was lots of tourists in there and I have no idea where they've come from so I'm just protecting myself in a very confined space and you can see what I mean lots of people lots of tourists around on a weekend seems to be more tourists here at the weekend than there is during the week I'm hoping you can't hear the washing machine in the background and hoping you can hear me from a little bit further away from my camera but I've been to the supermarket this is what I brought back I would say that I went to one of the more expensive supermarkets and also it was in a mall which tends to rise the price slightly anyway and this supermarket is called Conat there's certainly cheaper supermarkets in the city but just to give you an idea of what you get for 2,800 lek, let me show you all of the items. Surprisingly, the most expensive items of what I bought today at the supermarket is this meat. I'm gonna put the prices for everything down in the description, but yes, the meat was definitely the most expensive thing that I bought today. Along with that, I got some melon cut up. Again, it would have been cheaper to buy a full melon, I'm sure. It's just me being a little bit lazy. Uh, some pasta. Again, it probably would have been cheaper just to buy a bag of pasta and some pesto or something, but it's got ham and some veggies in there. I got some roasted vegetables, some aubergine, carrots and things like that. I got some tomatoes. I love tomatoes. I got some more olives, a big tub of olives. And what else? Oh yes, I got some fresh bread. It's still a little bit warm, so that's nice. I got some pineapple juice, as you can see there. And yeah, uh, some local beer. At least I think it's a local beer. It's Corker. Uh, that was the cheapest beer that I saw there. And this was the more expensive beer, the Erdinger, obviously probably imported. I have noticed sometimes if you've got these stickers on the side, it means that possibly they've been imported so the price is gonna be a little bit more expensive, which goes with obviously the Coca-Cola that has, does have a label at the side there. So yeah, that's a little bit more expensive is the Coca-Cola Zero. And then the local spring water, this is like fizzy carbonated water, and this is really cheap. You can't drink out of the tap here in Albania so yes lots of uh, water I'm always keeping hydrated 
and this is what I purchased. I have to openly admit that I am a lazy supermarket shopper and I won't travel a little bit further to find a cheaper supermarket. I will always go with convenience. I'm a little bit lazy, like the mango all cut up in a package. You are going to pay more for that than you are buying a mango. All over the city there are so many fruit and veg stalls and salad stalls. You'll find them all over and it is much, much cheaper than what I've paid at the supermarket. I'm sure if you go to a local butcher's, you'll find meat much cheaper than what I've paid in the supermarket. So that is just a guide. Much cheaper if you shop around, if you go to more local places. But the big supermarkets for convenience, you're going to be paying that a little bit more. So just bear that in mind when you're looking at the prices down in the description. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. As I said, regarding eating out, having a few beers, accommodation, I'm going to be all featuring that in future videos. I just wanted to get the basics. Uh, so you're aware of the general cost of living. To answer the question, is it a cheap place to live? Is it affordable here in Albania? It certainly is. Not bearing in mind that I'm in the capital city, as you get around to other cities, it will be even cheaper. So bear that in mind. If you have any questions, or if you want me to feature certain items in future videos that you'd like to know the price of, please let me know down in the comments and I will accommodate you and find out those prices. Until my next video, take care and travel safe.